Hello, welcome to another How to Code Well web chat. My name is Peter Fisher, and in today's episode, I would like to discuss the different types of development. So, front end development, database development, and back end development, all types of development for web and mobile applications. Um, I would like to discuss the traditional um, terminologies, the, t the traditional definitions of these types of development, what they meant in the past, what they mean now, and also what they could uh, mean in the future. Um, perhaps there's gonna be a difference in the definitions of those types of development. So I should really start with what, uh, what defines these areas of development. So let's talk about the front-end development first, shall we? So the front-end development um, is mainly uh, focusing on the, uh, the way the user interacts and reacts with the system, how the system reacts with the user, um, how the user uses the system, or the, the website or the mobile application, whatever it is, um, what buttons to click, are the um, are the is the data in a in a table? Is the data in a grid format? Is the uh, do we have tabs as a means of navigation, or are they? Uh, is it a drop down menu? All of those kind of things. So um, the front end developer is really concerned with how the user uh, uses the system um, and how the system responds to those user interactions as well. Um, so in terms of the technology, they are more focused around say things like CSS and JavaScript and HTML5. Um, and so they can produce websites pretty quickly, um, you know, prototypes of, of websites, wireframing, all those, those kind of things. They're more concerned with the user journey. They're more concerned with um, how the user gets from, say, uh, let the home page to actually getting to the shopping cart and pressing the checkout button. OK. Um, so, uh, like I said, yeah, user experience uh, and, and user interface are key for front end development. Now, they're not necessarily graphics designers, okay? And I wouldn't expect a graphics designer to have a lot of, um, uh, or as much um, uh, skills in say JavaScript or CSS that then perhaps um, a front-end developer would have. Um, however, there is a, a bit of a, 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 a merge between the two in some regards. A front-end developer would need to have knowledge of, of uh, manipulating images and putting images into a website or a mobile application. So they would need to have skills in say Photoshop or GIMP, but they wouldn't actually be, they wouldn't necessarily be uh, fully fledged graphics designers or topographers. Um, uh, but they would need to have a little bit of appreciation and understanding of what, uh, what they do. Now, as a complete contrast to the front end development, we have back end development. Now back end development, um, uh, it concerns itself more with how the, the back end works, so how the server works and all the technologies that the server uses. So for instance, PHP, Python, Ruby, all of those kind of things. So they would be also interested in um, the frameworks of those technologies, so Symfony, Laravel, Cake PHP, Django, uh, Ruby on Rails, all of those um, lovely frameworks that the server technologies use. Front, a back-end developer would also be interested in how the back-end uh, uh, the servers actually work. So they would have a little bit of knowledge in, say, uh, Nginx or Apache. They would also have a bit of knowledge in um, in the database as well. They won't be fully fledged uh, DBAs, which is a, a database administrator. So they won't they won't be. Um, I suppose in the same line as a front-end developer it isn't a fully fledged graphics designer. A back-end developer is traditionally not a fully-fledged um, database developer, um, but they would have an appreciation of how the data hangs together, how the data is, is modeled, um, how the data uh, is validated, the integrity of that data. Um, but they wouldn't necessarily know all the skills needed to, say, tweak the database to get the best possible uh, performance uh, juice out of it. Um, and then, and so I suppose that brings us neatly on to the database um, developers. The data, database developers wouldn't have much uh, knowledge or need of much knowledge in, say, the front end development. Traditionally, um, they would be more concerned with um, uh, relationship database management systems, so um, RDBMS, 
um, they would be they would also have some knowledge perhaps in uh, NoSQL and how those uh, databases work in comparison to SQL databases. They would have knowledge in, like I said, squeezing the performance out of the out of those um, databases. Um, they would also have perhaps a little bit of knowledge in the graphing because graphing is a technology that is uh, it has has blossomed in the last uh, year or so and that's um, how describing the relationship of the data and how the data um, relates to one another um, so the th those were the traditional uh, those were the traditional definitions of of uh, those types of developers now it gets a little bit of a gray area when we're talking about mobile application development because mobile application development needs to have um, the distinction between uh, these three development categories so a mobile application would require uh, local storage so local storage for saving data to the mobile phone because mobile phones bring up a huge uh, a different array of challenges that say a website doesn't have so for example we can't guarantee that a mobile will be um, in range will be have will have 4g or wi-fi and therefore we can't guarantee that we can actually uh, save a sync um, say, uh, synchronize data with the with the, the back end uh, so we for example we could be using a rest a restful api to send and receive data from a mobile phone to some sort of back-end server in the cloud perhaps um, but we can't guarantee that that's going to happen instantaneously and therefore we need to store that information locally on the phone and then perhaps have some sort of polling system that discovers when uh, they're, they're next in Wi-Fi range or, or 4G range and send that information up and, and therefore you've got the challenge there of of, of, of molding that data, modeling that data on the mobile phone itself. So traditionally, um, a mobile phone uh, application development would be seen as, say, a front-end developer's job, okay? That's the traditional sense, but um, in actual fact, uh, it needs to have um, knowledge of all of the types of development roles because you've got the database, um, uh, like I said, the local storage, sometimes that, that's in SQLite, um, sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's just, you know, saved as local files on, on, the, on the mobile application, but still it's saved, it's data that's been saved. And of course, you need to have the validation um, of that data too before it gets sent up. Um, also, you need the front-end development skills, so you need to, to, to make the application look nice as well. Um, and um, uh, also, how, the, how the, the, the phone reacts, the, mo the mobile device reacts to, um, to the RESTful requests and so forth. So like logging in and logging out, that kind of stuff. So it's a real gray area between what is mobile application. Is it front-end? Is it back-end? Personally, I think it's a bit, a bit of, of, of all worlds, and this is where I think the walls between these development categories are starting to break down. Um, now, if you're, it, I guess it all depends on the, on the size of your team and the scale of your project, because you might have teams of front-end developers, graphics designers, back-end developers, and database developers that, that perhaps are siloed in their disciplines, okay? But you might have a smaller teams perhaps a startup that requires um a lot of work you know to to, to get off the ground by a, a by um a small amount of people and those small amounts of developers need to have skills in all all kinds of areas they're not perhaps experts in one particular uh, discipline but they have knowledge and experience in in say database management as well as javascript um as well as perhaps the, the, the user interface and the user experience as well. So that's kind of where the uh, mobile application um, kind of fits in at the moment. Um, because when you when you give a, a developer who, who does mobile application uh, a job to build a mobile app, um, they, they normally need to have those kind of skills, those kind of uh, uh, knowledge of, of local storage, of the design of the app. Um, as well as how the data hangs together too. I mean, you could have you could you could have uh, backend developers that deal with how the data is stored on the server once it's being pushed up, and of course that 
that that potentially won't be um, the, the the developer who develops the actual mobile application. So I guess there is that that def, that uh, that wall between the the mobile app developer and the back end developer. Um, but still, the disciplines need to need to have a, a good solid understanding of each other. So where is this going to be in 2017 um, and moving fur further forward? Well, really the push has come from the front-end development side of things. So um, using technologies like JavaScript, we've got uh, new toys to play with in, say, ES6, which is the new um, version of JavaScript. We can do all sorts of clever things in, those, in, in, in that version, um, such as... Uh, compiling databases uh, locally on the client thing. So actually doing what the backend development used to do, but on the client side. This is already happening. Um, and the, the, the merge between backend development and frontend development is already happening, especially with things like uh, NPM and Node.js, where we're actually writing tools and um, uh, processes that perhaps the backend used to do, but uh, on the client or even running JavaScript directly on the server. Um, so you could argue that in some cases, there's no need for um, PHP or, or Django in certain circumstances. And so JavaScript development is really taking that off and merging the two backend development and frontend development together. Do I think it will be a complete merge? No, I don't. I don't think will frontend development will suddenly become backend development and it will just you know, become some uh, mishmash. No, I think I think for certain companies, certain size companies, you'll always still need that definition, the front end development and the back end development. But like I said, it all depends on the scale of the of the of the of the project and the size of the company. So that's where I want to leave it there. If you've got any comments or questions, or if you've got any um, definitions yourself of what uh, uh, these types of development styles should be. If I've missed, if you think I've missed anything out, or if you think I've I've uh, I, I've added something where I shouldn't have, then please let me know in the comment section below. If you've liked this video, then please like the like the uh, press the li that like button um, and share the video around if you found it helpful. Thanks again, and I shall see you all again soon. Thank you. Bye.